If Albert Ott could see this logo today, he would be proud. Proud that the small mathematical mechanical institute that he founded in Kempton in Germany in 1873 is a successful global company today. Proud that his namesake brand has remained true to his philosophy, his calling, and to his spirit. Back then, Kempton was in the midst of the Industrial Revolution and was a city known for precision mechanics. The demand for mechanical measuring instruments like those made by Albert Ott's Institute was high. In addition to custom-built works, he developed his own instruments and tried to make those of others better and more precise. In this way, Albert Ott recognized that instruments for measuring water quantity and flow velocities in natural waters, which were rather unhandy, attracted his interest. Cities had just started to build control structures for rivers and torrents in a planned manner to respond to the increasing number of flood disasters, and instruments that accurately measured water quantity and flow would fly off the shells if designed correctly. He got down to work to make the instrument, so far known as a current meter, more handy and above all more precise. Only two years after founding the company, Albert Ott launched his current meter, setting a benchmark which is still regarded as a reference today. He couldn't possibly anticipate that this high-precision instrument would make his name go down in history as the Ott Current Meter. Word spread about the precision of Ott instruments, and demand for them was high. Albert Ott spared no effort. He traveled the world and introduced his instruments to an international expert audience, receiving medals and awards. Others tried to produce copies of his instruments, but none of them achieved the same precision. The name Ott began to develop into a worldwide brand. Unexpectedly, Albert Ott died, having not even reached the age of 52. It was a bad loss. However, not the end of his Mathematical Mechanical Institute. Still family-owned, his brother Max overtook his tasks. Quite soon, Albert Stice, a former art mechanic and successful entrepreneur, took over the leadership of the company until finally in 1919, the sons of Albert Ott, Hermann and Ludwig, continued the legacy of their father. Each of them contributed to company growth with their own developments, and the Ott brand became stronger every year. They believed in progress and were willing to take new directions. Thus, the Ott Company was the first non-governmental institution that had its own calibration tank for current meters. Entrepreneurial skills and vision helped sales rise. Ott was growing and exported instruments around the whole world. The employees were proud of the company. They were the Ottlers and shaped the proverbial Ott Company culture. Many apprentices who started there became successful businessmen later. Then came World War II, even more devastating than World War I, and far more destructive than anything one could ever imagine. It was simply not possible to continue the business in its existing form. The markets collapsed. Production was changed to armaments. And finally, the destruction drove the company from one extreme to another, but couldn't ruin it altogether. War was over. Losses were huge. Nevertheless, Ott would create a new beginning. Many friendly relationships of Ott at home and abroad paid off, allowing the company to re-access its traditional and established markets. It was imperative to restore the good reputation of Ott products. The company made it happen. New products were launched and traditional products were developed further. Despite or perhaps because of the problems, people stood together and the art spirit was revived. Finally, Ott introduced its mechanical punched tape water level recorder for remote data transmission. The information age had begun. As one of the first technological users, the company was able to gain a foothold in the newly emerging market of environmental technology. Four years later, at the AMS Symposium in Washington, D.C., 
Ott presented their first automatic weather station. Soon after, Ott launched the Algomatic, an electronic data logger that could be called from the public telephone network to retrieve the stored data. A technological milestone at that time. Now the focus was increasingly on system solutions. Measuring, storing and sending data. Ott responded to the economic crisis and to foreign low-cost products with quality and creativity. The Ottlers were just creative minds with good ideas. In the previous years, Ott had increasingly supplied precision parts for the mechanical engineering industry. However, orders from this crisis-ridden industry were reduced to almost zero. Hard times for the company, which was run by engineer Helmut Heel and no longer family-run after 1971. Ott also survived this crisis. And with the new owner, Heinrich Bauer, came a turning point. He remembered what the name Ott once stood for came up with many new ideas for more effective instruments and made the company fit again for its established market, hydrology. Keeping a close eye on the rapidly changing market, Ott also invested in the development of more efficient technologies with new innovations regularly. At the same time, the first subsidiary abroad was founded, Ott Southern Africa. Ott also won its customers with increasingly powerful systems. One milestone was the Ott LogoSense, a small multi-channel data logger with flexible sensor connection options, individually configurable via software and breakthrough in innovation for the technology. Heinrich Bauer had done an excellent job for the name of Ott. Looking for a suitable successor, he still cared about the Ott employees and their future in the company. And so, he chose the financially strong technology company, Danaher. The advantages of a company like Danaher in a globalized world were clearly visible. Access to new markets, synergies, new production methods, introduction of more efficient structures, and of the Danaher business system. Financially healthy background, and thus, freedom for innovations. In 2002, Ott was integrated into the Danaher Group as an independent company wars, personal and economic crisis could not stop the success of the company. Thanks to the tireless work and strong dedication of loyal and skilled employees through many decades to today, countless innovations have followed. Inventiveness, creative talents and readiness to explore uncharted waters, that is what the name Ott stands for.